Hey there, hackers. I've got some great news. Did you know that you can set custom color palettes and themes, kind of, in Temple OS? Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So here's my virtual machine. I've created a file, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you what my file does, and I'll show you the traditional way Temple OS does it. So I'm going to include my theme holy C file. See what that did there? Change the colors, fantastic. How do you get it to change the colors like that? Well, you set a custom color palette and then you basically call a special function to assign that color palette. Now, I've created my own method that's a little bit more user intuitive and friendly. So let's just do a theme set for light. Bam, let's do a theme set for dark. Bam, let's do a theme set for, I don't know, monochrome or monocolor or whatever. Hmm, okay. Now see, this is because of how my functionality is actually built. I built it to where if it doesn't really recognize what you're putting in as a command, it just goes ahead and defaults it to the light theme. I know, that's bad, lazy programming practice. If I can not do typos. There you go. Two of these are the defaults in Temple OS. Can you guess which ones they are? So how did I go about doing this? Let me go ahead and set this to the pretty light color because that looks kind of easier to read. Okay, and let's just edit my... So this is my theme file. What you see right here, this palette is my dark colored palette. Okay, then what you see here is my function that I've created that basically pulls in the theme string, and then it just does a bunch of if blocks, or if else if. Why not? It's better than a switch. But it says, okay, if you compare the strings to the theme that we get, if it's dark or if it's night, then set it to the dark color scheme, which I've created up here. If not, go to the gray theme, if it's red as gray, and all else fails, go to the bright theme. Now, what you'll notice is that uh, traditionally in programming, this is the negation operator. For some reason, I don't know why, the string comp function does it like backwards for how I've been using it. Like when I want it to evaluate to true, it evaluates to like false or whatever, so I just put the negation on there, so that way it actually does it specifically for that one. Maybe I'm doing something wrong here, you know, I'm not really all that big into holy C. What if you've noticed here, I'm actually calling another function called graphic palette set. And then I pass in the palette, which is created based off of this CGB whatever class. So what you do if you want to set your own custom themes is that you basically declare a public global variable like on the top of your Holy C file so that way when you include it, it actually shows up whenever you load it into Holy C. This is just a copy of the traditional color scheme, but I've just kind of switched some of the colors where, you know, what's normally black is white now and what's normally white is black. You can set all the colors as custom as you want them. This is like VGA graphics stuff, so it's not really that difficult. It's kind of like doing your web browser and you just, you know, do your whole thing at the where you just do your like FFF, FFF for pure white and that. Well, you just add a couple more and there you go. That's what you've got here. And of course, here's my function call that sets the theme automatically to night because, you know, I like night mode. And I like it with a darker screen, especially at night. Duh. Well, let's turn on autocomplete for a second here, so you can kind of get an understanding of kind of where all this comes from. So you've got graphic palette set, right? Let's actually go to the file right here, turn off autocomplete, thank you. And you'll notice that there's some commented out stuff that I was playing with. This is a graphic palette set function. So in here, it just pulls in, of course, that palette that we had created earlier, that array. And then it just simply goes through and iterates through all that. And it just sets for the current colors. You know, that's what it sets. But right here, 
if I can read. This is like far away for me, the computer screen. So in order to do this, you would just set different custom colors. And I just kind of followed the standard that's been used in Temple OS, where Terry has it, that you have like whatever you're modifying and then your verb or your action is actually at the end. And he's doing that because I think that's traditional in C++. I don't know, I'm not a C++ programmer. So that's the same exact thing. You have the two that are already existing, which is your color palette gray, and then you're just color palette standard and that's how you would do that so hopefully this is a little bit of an inspiration for you and can kind of play around with the colors you can already kind of tell looking at them hey this is like maybe a blue or that this is a purple and this is like a red or whatever you know looking through it and then you'll kind of get an idea well we can play around with that and maybe you might even be able to add some more colors to the array that you might even be able to use for other purposes so you could actually create new colors by looking at this and editing the variables that you saw in the other file. I would recommend do not edit the file like from the Atom directory, always copy it to your home directory and then just include it. It will override all the stuff, it's fine and it just works out better that way because then you can just comment out that include and then you can reboot and everything's fine and then you can look into it from there. So hopefully this was helpful, maybe even inspirational. Thanks for watching and Heady Hacking. <laughs>